Good evening, my dears, and welcome. I'm Lady McCreepster. I thought we'd best check in on Darren and Frank and Teddy, since when we last left them, Urznok, the World Eater, had decided to keep Sarah till Darren found his ex-wife. If you're new to this channel and have no idea what I'm talking about, a playlist of all the previous episodes of this series is in the video description below. Now come, lean in closer, and we'll begin. The worst had happened. Sarah had been kidnapped and taken to the netherworld. I walked over to where she had been standing and stared at the ground in shock. I saw a small piece of black plastic poking out of the sand. I picked it up and dusted it off. It was the remote of minor inconveniences. I slid it into my back pocket. Well, that guy was a dick. Satan's voice said. We looked around, but no one was there. Satan? I asked. Where are you? I'm under here, said Satan's disembodied voice. Under? What do you mean? Oh. A pointed red tail was waving at us from underneath a giant boulder. Yeah, Satan's voice said. I got crushed just a bit. Are you going to die? Can evil ever truly die, Desmond? Uh, maybe? No, Desmond. The answer is no. Well, that's a bummer. It's a bummer that I'm not going to die? It's a bummer that evil can never die. This is a wonderfully philosophic conversation. I'd love to continue it after someone gets this rock off me. I've got it, Miss Hatchetface said. She stepped forward and wrapped her arms around the boulder, digging her tiny pink fingers into the stone. With a heave and a grunt, she rolled the rock off Satan. Thanks, Satan said, making a poor attempt of unruffling his suit and brushing the dust off himself. So, now that everything is settled, should we go back to Disneyland? What? I asked. Everything is not settled. Sarah's been kidnapped and taken to the netherworld. Well, yeah, Satan replied. But you heard what Uznok's lawyer said. As long as the netherworld refugee remains on Earth, it won't be destroyed. No Sarah, no apocalypse. Sorry about you, daughter, but you know, win some, lose some. Win some, lose some? Miss Hatchetface yelled. She walked up to Satan and jabbed a finger into his chest. That little girl trusted you, and I am not going to let you just abandon her in the netherworld so you can sweep your own screw up under the rug. What would your mother say? My mother? Satan rubbed the back of his head. I really don't see what she has to do with anything. Oh no? Well, why don't we call her and see what she has to say? No, Satan yelled. Ahem, I mean, uh, I hardly think that's necessary. We can just go find Sarah's mom and ask her if she knows how to prevent the apocalypse. That way, it's a happy ending for everyone involved. And uh, no one's mother needs to get involved. Wow, I said. I really didn't expect the CEO of hell to be afraid of his mother. I am not afraid of her. Satan replied. I just... I have detected insincerity in your voice, Frank and Teddy said. It appears you are trying to tell a lie. I shall assist you so that your deception is not detected. Frank and Teddy turned to me. Satan is not afraid of his mother, he said. Uh, thanks, Frank and Teddy. Satan said. Frank and Teddy gave him a salute. So, why are you afraid of your mother? I asked. Gee, look at the time, Satan said, checking his wrist. We'd better get up to Earth and start looking for that netherworld refugee. You're not wearing a watch, I replied. 
I sighed. How on earth are we ever going to find my ex-wife? Don't worry, Satan said. I know a guy. We travelled long and far to get to the hermit's house, a small cliffside cottage that looked like it was made out of mud and smelled like it was made out of something else. We all sat hunched over on tiny stools. The hermit insisted on making us tea, even though we all stressed that we were in a hurry. Don't worry, he said. It'll only take a couple of hours. We sat for two hours while he made the tea, which smelled like a cross between a fragrant bouquet of roses and a garlic fart. He set the chipped teacups in front of us on deformed home-knit koozies. So, he said, sitting down on a tree stump in the middle of the room, what can I do for you? We need to locate a netherworld being, I said. What? he said. Why would you want to do that? It's a complicated situation, Satan said. The details are not really important. What's important is that we must locate the ex-wife of Darren so that we may return her to the netherworld. We hope to obtain his daughter in trade. Perhaps we will bring about the apocalypse, but I am optimistic that Urznok, the world eater, will be open to negotiation. This time, the hermit did drop his teacup. Did you just say you're going to bring about the apocalypse? No, 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 Satan said. It's just a misunder... Yes, Urznok, the world eater, will not destroy the earth as long as the refugee is present. But we intend to return her. I do not fully understand the plan. Urznok, the world eater? The hermit said. I thought he was supposed to be in eternal slumber. What happened? Well, Satan began. You know Jerry the intern? The hermit sighed. You know, you really should consider firing that guy, he said. He's my nephew, Satan said. I keep him mostly as a favor to my sister. Ah. So... Can you help us locate the being or not? Miss Hatchetface asked. I might be able to, the hermit said. For a price. The price is that I don't put my foot in your face, she replied. Ah, well, it's hard to argue with violence. So who is this netherworld being? It's my ex-wife, I said. Are you serious? He said. That sounds like a bad joke. It appears that many of the jokes in this story are bad, Frank and Teddy boomed. Thank you, Frank and Teddy, I said. And then, turning to the hermit, yes, I'm serious. All right, well, if you're really determined for me to help you stalk your ex-wife, I guess I've got no choice, he eyed Miss Hatchetface nervously. I'll need a few things first, though. He patted the pockets of his raggedy coat. Does anybody have a goblet of undying embers? No, Satan said. A scrying glass of eternal misery? Nope. A loofah? Uh, no. Uh, that's too bad. I'll have to stop by Walmart later. Anyway, we'd better get started. Give me your hand, Dexter. It's Darren, actually. Didn't Satan call you Dexter? He did, but he's got some sort of memory issue or something. Ah. I offered my hand out to the hermit. He seized my wrist with a gloved hand and started sprinkling salt in my palm as he hummed a gypsy-sounding tune to himself. Good, he said. Now that your palm is nice and tasty, we can get started with the scrying snork. The what? The this. The hermit pulled out a small, scaly, blue lizard creature from one of his many pockets and placed it in my palm. The lizard licked up the salt, belched out blue flames, and then said in a grave, croaky voice, The netherworld creature is in the Florida Keys. The creature paused for a moment. And you should moisturize, it said. 
I try, but it's the dry winter air. Well, it'll be better down in Florida. I hate Florida. Who doesn't? The thing about netherworld beings is that they bring the spirit of chaos and insanity with them wherever they go. It infects the land, seeping into the soil and driving every living thing to the brink of lunacy. Before long, even the most ordered, peaceful places in the world become a receptacle for the insane. What I'm saying is, we should have realised your ex-wife was in Florida. Satan stared out the window of the car as he finished his speech, the warm glow of the sun filtering through the shadows of the palms that flitted past as we drove down into the Keys. Are you saying that my ex-wife is the reason Florida is so messed up? I asked. Well, it's either that or all the cocaine, he replied. My money's on the cocaine. Mine too! It really is amazing, isn't it? What is? Cocaine! Sure, Satan, I said. I made a mental note that I'd finally figured out what was wrong with his memory. I looked out the window too. It was nearing evening now and the warm, wet air made my skin feel sticky. It smelled like the ocean. I turned back to Satan. There's still no way for us to tell exactly where in the Florida Keys my ex-wife is, I said. It could be a long search. Oh, I've got that covered, Satan answered. He plunged his hand into his pocket and pulled out a writhing blue scaly thing. Is that the snork? I asked. Sure is. The snork ruffled its scales indignantly and looked up at Satan. You know, you could have just asked me where she was back at the hermit's shack. No need to stuff me in your pocket and smuggle me out. What were you thinking? I try not to think if possible, Satan replied. It's terribly unpleasant. I suddenly realized the secret behind Satan's constant cheerfulness. So, you know where she is? Of course I know where she is, the snork replied. I'm a snork, aren't I? You're the snorkiest, Satan said. So, where is this girl? She owns an outdoor beach bar called Cabana Anna's. Where is that? Take a left on 17th Street and follow it straight down the coast. You hear that, Frank and Teddy? We're heading to Cabana Anna's. Better hang a left up here on 17th Street. Roger! Frank and Teddy boomed. The tires squealed as he jerked the wheel to the left. So, I began, how did we decide Frank and Teddy was driving again? Well, obviously he's the least suspicious, Satan replied. But he doesn't have a driver's license. Well, not for Earth, no, but he's fully licensed to ride demonic nightmare creatures from the realms of eternal sorrow. I really don't think that's the same. Agree to disagree, Paul. That one's not even close to my name. Agree to disagree. I sighed and redirected my attention to the warm orange and pink of the Florida sunrise. We arrived at the beach that played host to Cabana Anna's in the swing of midday. The air was wet and sticky, and a haze of heat shimmered six inches above the sand. Beachgoers lay baking in the sun, and girls wearing bikinis batted volleyballs around on makeshift courts. We attracted a lot of stares. Satan had swapped his suit for a pair of swim trunks, but Miss Hatchetface and I were still in regular house clothes. And then there was Frank and Teddy. Satan had hidden the snork in a large conch shell that he occasionally held up to his ear to listen for directions. The snork kept sassing him, though, with the results being that Satan looked to be arguing with a large conch shell the entire time. Finally, we spotted Cabana Anna's and started over, only to be interrupted by a group of bikini-clad college girls. Hi, said the leader of the pack. My name's Anna. She had bronze skin, light blonde hair, and a swimmer's body. 
If I had been ten years younger and significantly more attractive, I might have talked to her. But right now, I was on a mission. Sorry, I said, trying to push past her. I'm just heading over to the bar over there. Wow, rude, she said. Go ahead, we really just want to talk to your friend anyway. Satan grinned. Well, I don't usually go for humans, but... Um, no, not you, Anna said, giving Satan a disdainful once over. And ew, I was talking about your tall friend. With that, she turned to Frank and Teddy and tossed her hair. What's your name, sexy? She asked. Frank and Teddy. <laughs> wow, she said. Your voice is so deep and your name sounds foreign. Yes, it is from hell. Anna tossed her head back and laughed, slapping Frank and Teddy on the chest and letting her hand linger. Oh my God, she said. You are so funny. My friends and I don't usually do this, but since it's winter break and all... She shot her friends a conspiratorial look. Do what? Frank and Teddy boomed in his singed, charcoal voice. What is happening? The girl wiggled her finger and Frank and Teddy bent down. She whispered in his ear. What? None of that sounds appealing to me. Well, if you change your mind, Anna said, reaching into her bikini top. She pulled out a sharpie and inked her name on Frank and Teddy's paw. She gestured to her friends to come along with a toss of the head, and they all walked off, giggling, hips swaying. Why would she write on me? Frank and Teddy said. I did nothing wrong. It's a phone number, Miss Hatchetface said. Why would I want her phone number? She wrote on me. I guess you wouldn't. Miss Hatchetface laughed. Humans are weird, Satan said. Can we please just get on with this? I'm ready to see this planet burn already. The corner of Miss Hatchetface's mouth lifted a bit. Somebody's got their feelings hurt, she said. I'm evil, Satan replied. I don't have feelings. Let's just go. We trudged over to the bar and Satan leaned on the counter, dinging the customer service bell over and over again. You know, said the barmaid, the faster you ding it, the faster I go. Just watch. She reached up towards a bottle of tequila to take it off the shelf, movements crawling like a turtle. You're very funny, Satan said. I'm here to see the owner. Oh yeah? the barmaid asked, still reaching for the tequila. Why's that? It's top secret netherworld stuff. Apocalypse and all that. You wouldn't understand. Okay, weirdo. If you're going to do drugs, you can take it to another bar. We don't allow that stuff here. Just get the owner, Satan sighed. You're looking at her, the barmaid replied. You? Satan said. Hey, Darren, why didn't you tell me this was your ex-wife? That's not my ex-wife. For the first time, the barmaid looked at me. Her eyes got wide and her mouth fell open. D -d -d Darren, she said. How did you find me? What do you mean? You're not... What the f... The barmaid's face morphed. Her nose grew smaller and turned upwards just a bit. Her eyes widened and changed colour from green to blue. Her short black hair turned long and blonde and her strong bone structure softened just a bit. The barmaid had become my ex-wife, Annie. Oh, that's a neat trick, Satan said. How do you do that? Annie ignored him. What are you doing here, Darren? I could ask the same question, I said. Annie looked around, worried wrinkles slowly creeping over her face. Where's Sarah? She asked. Oh, so now you care where Sarah is, I said. Five years without a trace of you and now you're Miss Wonderful Parent? Bullshit. 
Hey, hey, hey! Miss Hatchet Face interceded. Is now really the time to argue? We need to focus on getting Sarah back. Back? Annie said. What do you mean, back? Where is she? Oh, nowhere you wouldn't know, I said. Just kicking back and relaxing in the netherworld with Ursnok the World Eater? What? Annie said. What is Sarah doing with my dad? You're what now? Well, that was certainly surprising, wasn't it? I wonder where this story will have us end up. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Do leave a comment and say hi, and hit that subscribe button and bell icon for updates to new uploads. That's all I have for you today, my dears. Come back and visit me soon.